How's that for cellular internet? 396 down and 68 meg up. But today's video is a little bit different, but it's still gonna be about DIY. It's about helping you get internet when you don't really have any options or you don't think you have any options. Now I bought this house I've shared with you guys in my videos recently, needs a ton of work, but I love where it is. I've got the view of the mountain behind me, but anytime you get in a spot like that, that usually means you're not gonna get internet. Now the people who lived here before me did have phone service and they were using DSL. And if you've ever used that, it's probably the worst internet you can get. You're lucky if you get about three or four megabit download and the upload is abysmal. When you're doing things on wireless internet, it really is a whole other world. So a great resource is this other YouTube channel called the Internet Resource Center. It's a husband and wife team. These guys know everything about mobile internet. I watched a ton of their videos. It really helped guide me. But the one message you're gonna get from them is that there is no single solution for everybody. Many people are gonna look at Starlink like this and think this is definitely it. I ordered one of these immediately when I moved here and figured for sure this is gonna be what I would be living on. Now, if you can get Starlink, it's pretty much a guaranteed thing that it's gonna give you a pretty good service, you'll get great speed, and the price is somewhat reasonable at about $110 a month. Now, the issue with Starlink is everybody can't get it, but this is actually not in use. In fact, this thing has been in my garage since I bought it because I've got a better solution that worked for me. So there are two ways to get the internet in a rural location. You can do something like satellite, like Starlink, which is a great option. And if you can get it, that's kind of the easy way to go. And that's probably gonna be your best choice. But if you can't get Starlink, or you wanna do something more mobile, the second part is gonna be what's really gonna interest you. So now with all that buildup, what am I actually using? So I'm gonna to jump to the end. This little contraption that I have right here, that's all wired into this antenna. This is not a satellite antenna. This is actually a cellular antenna that faces in a direction. And I'm gonna talk about antennas in a minute because it's really important to understand it if you ever wanna get good internet. The device that's underneath, a lot of you noticed it in the comments, this is actually a T-Mobile box. This is called their home internet. Now the thing that's amazing about this is they're selling this right now, it's 50 bucks a month for unlimited data. It's not sort of unlimited, it's completely unlimited. Now the problem is this is not available everywhere and that I went into one of the stores and I told the person that I was moving, told them where, and they said, oh, it's not available. But they said, if you wanna try it, we can sell you one and you can have two weeks, I think it was, to try it out. I had really nothing to lose. I bought it, brought it up here and tried it out and it worked. I could not believe it. I was getting about 80 meg down and about five meg up. I personally hated T-Mobile. None of these companies have anything to do with this video. In fact, I thought T-Mobile was probably the worst carrier on the planet because they were kind of like Sprint reincarnated and Sprint was never very good. I have completely changed because this T-Mobile box for me has ended up being the best solution. So now you're at your rural location, you wanna figure out what can you do. So you grab your phone, you start doing speed tests. It doesn't really tell you anything because there's a problem and this is what most people miss. Inside your phone is an antenna to pick up cellular data, but the antenna is what's called omnidirectional. That means that it picks up signals all around it. Now the fundamental problem with all antennas is you can't have an antenna that can just pick up everything without losing some signal. So when you have what's called an omnidirectional that can listen everywhere, the signal is going to be reduced. Every part of the country, there is actually cellular data. Now I know many of you say, nope, it's all dead, there's no way I can get it, but that's because you're using your phone. This is an omnidirectional antenna. You can only listen. The next thing you want to figure out is what cell towers are around you. You can ask your neighbors, friends, everybody has a different answer, and most of them are wrong. You can also get these great apps on your phone that are going to tell you where those cell towers are, and they are wrong. Don't download them, don't even bother. I got them, downloaded them. I wasted so much time thinking there were towers all over the place. I don't know how the information is so bad. And this is what you're gonna need. This is what is called the directional antenna. Now what this does is it will pick up a cellular signal from all the carriers, but in a specific direction. If I point it right at the camera, it will only pick up what's coming from there. So the problem with these are they're very powerful, but if you have it pointed even slightly off and that's the signal, you will not get as good a speed. So what that means for you from the internet, instead of getting a 100 meg download, you might get 30. So with a little bit of effort, you can really increase your speed. And my end result went from getting about 100 meg down and 10 meg up, I ultimately ended up with 400 meg down and 40 meg up. And the next most important thing isn't just the directional antenna, it's the fact that you will need to use an antenna. Don't get a device and just leave it sitting on your counter because you're giving up internet speed and you don't have to. You wanna get a data plan that gives you unlimited data or enough that you're happy with it, and then you wanna maximize the speed. I don't care that I had unlimited data, I wanted a lot of megabit so that we could do streaming and the kids could use their games and they wouldn't really notice the difference. This one can be a little bit harder to use, so I'm gonna show you a better alternative. I bought the device knowing that I could bring it back. I brought 
brought it up here to test it and I could not believe I was getting a signal. I was getting about 80 megabit down and four meg up. Now that's not really great, but if you have no internet, that's actually pretty amazing for $50 a month. So I was pretty excited and I figured, hey, this is what I'm gonna use. And then I started to think about it a little bit more. It was really bugging me that I could only get 80 meg and four because I kept thinking, there's gotta be that cell tower is out there somewhere. And in my case, it's on the side of the mountain, which might seem obvious, but that's not always the case. You can be looking at a tower and you might not actually have the antenna that you think you do there. So you have to figure out where that tower is. And remember, this directional antenna has to be pointed exactly at the tower, like with extreme accuracy. And that is one of the downfalls, but there's an easy way to do it. These routers, including this T-Mobile, have the ability, or sort of, to have an external antenna. And this device that I showed in my community post, sitting on this piece of wood, is actually the T-Mobile device, it's a second one, opened up inside that I tapped into the antennas. Now you're not breaking, you might be breaking a warranty, but you're not doing anything illegal. All you're doing is amplifying the ability to get a better signal. But this antenna is different. It's kind of like a semi-directional. Directionals can be really tricky to set up because the difference between pointing it this way versus like this, you could lose like 50 meg on your internet speed. Where this antenna is directional, but it's broader, it has a wider ability and you will get a much better signal and that means more speed for you. So I'm gonna say this again, if you get any type of an internet router, whether it's this, this is a, another small one, an NCGO, they've all got some ability to connect an antenna. If you don't use it, you are losing internet speed. Adding an, an, adding an antenna will typically double your speed, maybe even more. Now the downside is you are gonna have to poke a wire, put it outside your house. Now the next question is, what carrier do you go with? What's available? It doesn't really matter what you've got your phone and your phone, keep whatever carrier you want. Your data can be different. In fact, my phone is AT&T. Right now through T-Mobile, the only real data solution they have is their home internet. So if this will work for you and it's available in your area, I highly recommend checking this one out because I think for 50 something bucks a month, this is an absolute steal for unlimited data. I'm hoping the other carriers also come out with something similar. Verizon currently has a home internet box as well. I couldn't find anybody who actually owns it, so I don't know if they're just advertising in a couple of areas. Now, AT&T has a bunch of different data plans. You can buy a router. AT&T is a little bit more complicated. You might have to use a router like this. This device is called a Pepwave, and these are really popular. These take a SIM, just like your cell phone. But I will warn you, AT&T doesn't really offer any kind of unlimited data unless you're a business. So if you have a business, you can get an unlimited data plan, but they say right in the terms and agreement that you're not really supposed to use it for streaming. There's all these weird sort of rules that I don't really think they monitor it, but that's sort of you taking your own chances if you wanna go that route. Start with T-Mobile because it's the best deal, cheapest plan you can get for the most throughput. Second choice would be AT&T if you have a business. If you don't have a business, you may have to look at some other um, solutions like Nomad Internet. You'll find a list of those at that Internet Resource Center. I'll link them in my description below. You wanna push that data as fast as possible because that's gonna be your experience. That means streaming, your kids can play games, whatever you want. So no matter which device you get, you've got to get some type of antenna. Now I'm gonna link the company I got this antenna from. These guys are pretty cool. All they do is antennas and they know all about them. I actually asked them a bunch of questions. They were really helpful. They even sold this kit for the T-Mobile device. They gave me all the adapters in the box. Now this is not ultimately how I'm gonna leave this. I just did this so that I could quickly move it, adjust it, and then I could use my phone to do speed tests. So I would connect my phone to the T-Mobile box and then I would do a Wi-Fi speed test. I would point it in this direction, then you can easily move it a little bit and keep going in a full circle. Now yes, this is boring, it's not exciting, but once you get the answer, the speed you will get is worth it. So right now I've got this antenna pointed this way. I'm actually using my little EcoFlow to run it. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna do a speed test with this antenna pointed this way and maybe it works fine. Now we can see we're getting 322 down and 48 up. Now you might be thinking, who cares? That speed's still excellent. You're paying for unlimited data, so why would you want anything slower than the absolute maximum you could get? So if we try to move the antenna a little bit differently, let's change the position a bit more. Now we'll change it just slightly. Now when you do this when you're first getting set up, it pays to either put it on a tripod or just make sure that you're turning it in a kind of set way so that you can kind of track where it is. How's that for cellular internet? 396 down and 68 meg up. That's pretty amazing. A lot of people don't even get that 
on a landline carrier. Part of the reason the speed is so great right now is because the antenna is outside. This is why you have to put antennas outside your house. You obviously don't keep the router out here, you'd wire it through. But when you're first getting started, you can build a little test rig like this easy enough. And that's how this test works. You'll point your antenna starting in one direction, connect your phone to it, and do a speed test. This is gonna be data that's real. It's coming to your phone so you can see exactly the results for yourself that you're getting. Then you'll rotate the antenna about a fourth of the way, do the same test again. Rotate it again, do the same test again. And you'll do it probably a dozen times as you're going around and eventually you're gonna to start to notice something with the numbers. They're either gonna get better or worse. Now you might even have two towers, so keep going all the way around and see what you get. But then once you've done this for a while, you're eventually gonna find the hot spot, and in my case, it's actually not the peak of the mountain, which is over here. The peak of the mountain is here, and that's what I thought I would get the best signal with. In fact, I can see a little tower on the top. It's actually in this direction so that tells me that there must be a tower that I just don't see. Maybe it's inside of a building. This is why it is so critical that you try your own test, use your own data, and make your own decision. Another trick is if you're really short on money, this is what you can do. You wanna check out each carrier. If you've got friends that might have a phone that are on their um, specific carrier, you can ask people to borrow a phone, bring up an AT&T phone, bring up a Verizon phone, or bring up a T-Mobile. The other thing you can do is if you need a phone and you really can't get one, go buy a pay-as-you-go phone. Pay for one month, get the cheapest phone you can get that has data that you can run an app on, like an Android or something, buy that pay-as-you-go phone for one month, bring it to your location and test it out. So that's the hard part that most people can't get a grip on. They'll bring up their phone, they'll get kind of lousy service and say, oh, there's no way I can get cellular data. But you have to plan to go that step further. If you've got any cellular data at all, you've got to then maximize the signal. And that's where these antennas come into play. You could live on this thing without an antenna forever and maybe the speed's awful. But why would you? You're paying the same amount of money per month. Now, yep, this antenna costs 400 bucks. It's a ton of money, but it's, there's no moving parts. It's not gonna break. Once you've bought it and put it up, you're gonna get great speed forever. So an antenna is a pain in the ass to put in. There's just no other way around it. But once you do it, you will have such an impact on the speed of your data. It is worth every bit of effort. Every carrier told me there was nothing available here. Test it for yourself get individual phones, and once you get any hint of cellular data, see what might be available for you, and then go ahead and spend some money, test out a T-Mobile device, see if you can get an AT&T device or Verizon, buy an antenna. Remember with antennas, cell towers don't generally move. Once they're up, they're gonna be there. So once you find the magic location of where that thing is, now you can point the semi-directional antenna at it, or if you wanna go hardcore, you can get a truly directional antenna, and once you get it aimed perfectly, this will give you the best signal, but either antenna is still gonna boost what you're gonna get huge. It makes a giant difference, and most people don't do an antenna and they have a really bad experience, and they just say that there's no cellular data. The last benefit of doing this is that many of your phones, if you go the same carrier, will allow you to make your voice calls over that Wi-Fi or ultimately the cellular data, so you can actually make your phone calls better as well without bothering to go out and buy one of those cellular repeaters. And the other thing you're probably wondering is like, why don't I just use my Starlink? Like I'm paying 110 bucks a month. Well, I could end up on this eventually if T-Mobile kind of messes up. But the reason I'm not is Starlink does have a couple of glitches. The speed varies a lot and they do have a little bit of higher latency. And latency is just the amount of time that when you kind of transmit information, how long it takes before it comes back. Now Starlink is still excellent and for most people it's great. And again, if you want a turnkey solution, just get Starlink if it's available. But the reason I'm still keeping the cellular as my primary is because my latency is like 40 millisecond, which is really, really good. And satellite is definitely a little bit slower than that. And for the moment, I feel like my 400 meg download is actually gonna be way better than what I get on Starlink in most cases. I am absolutely thrilled with the results I'm getting. The internet speed is so much better than I expected. We stream on multiple devices. I can upload my YouTube videos. So the bottom line is it took me months to come up with what I just told you. And maybe you're impressed by it or maybe you're not, but in the world of cellular data, people make mistakes over and over. In fact, it's like all IT. Everybody thinks they're an expert, but a lot of times it just doesn't work. So start by forgetting everything you know, forget about the carriers that you think stink, start off, check each one of them, get a phone for each carrier if you can for your location, do a pay as you go. If you get any amount of a cell signal whatsoever, that tells you there is cellular data and these antennas are the secret weapon 
for boosting those horrible amounts of cellular data. They can make all the difference. Now there are lots of other internet solutions that you can get. And for those things, I'd recommend checking out that Internet Resource Center. Again, those guys keep tabs on everything. I wish that rural internet was an exact science, but it isn't. That's why I asked you guys in the community post if you actually wanted me to make this video, because it is just a tricky topic to discuss. But the lessons I learned were shared in this video, and I hope it makes your life a little bit easier, and maybe it allows you to live somewhere that you didn't think you could actually get service, and gives you some good internet speed for the long run.